Good morning, everyone. Is this thing on? Well, let me tell you, it's 25 degrees. What a great day to go into the city. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's me. My name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last eight years. I love museums and maybe you do too if you've clicked on this video, but I realized that I've never been to a museum alone, which is kind of wild. In the last couple of years, I've really tried to be more comfortable doing things on my own. I think it is a superpower. I am always in awe. I'm always jealous of people who can go out and just do stuff on their own by themselves. And so today we are going to do it ourselves. <laughs> and I'm a little bit nervous. Now it is a long journey into the city. Today we are going to the Imperial War Museum, which I'm super excited about. I am kind of nervous. That's okay. We're out here. We're trying new things. So I hope you like this video. Have a seat, get cozy, put your feet up, maybe turn on the fan. It's hot, isn't it? We have a pretty long journey ahead of us. So I'm going to finish my cold brew, um, finish packing my bag and off we go. I hope you like this video. We're out here trying new things. Oh my God. And um, what could go wrong? Maybe I just jinxed myself. Hey guys, Lana here. So first up, allergies. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My allergies this morning have been unbelievable. The last week really, more than that, they've been insane. So I'm hoping to do this voiceover without any sneezes. Apologies in advance. <laughs> now this is not my first time to the Imperial War Museum. I wish it was because I'm sure that as a YouTube title, first time. Or how about this, foreigners first time at the Imperial War Museum. That probably would have been great. Um, but it would be a lie. I have been before, but what's really interesting, at least to me, is that the first time I went to this museum was November 2015. That was the month and year that I moved to the UK. I had to go into the city to pick up one of my, like, um, visa permits. You get, like, this little card. So I had to go in and pick up this physical card, and while I was in the city, went to the museum with my partner. And so coming back, you know, eight years later, it feels really, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. My life is so different now than it was when I first got here. Of course, when I first moved here, I had no idea what was going to happen. Was I going to stay in England? Was I going to hate it? Was I going to be back in Canada within the year? You know, I really had no idea. And fast forward now, eight years later, going into the city, going back to this particular museum, when my life is so completely different. I'm still here. I love it here. No, my life is not perfect and the UK is not perfect either. That's just reality. But yeah, it's just kind of wild. I'm having a little bit of an existential thing right now. <laughs> anyway, back to this video, what you're actually watching. Um, so we take the train in and then we have a tube. It's not that difficult. It just takes a while, but it seems to be a really nice day. The air con on the train was working, which was absolute bliss. Is it cheap? No, it's not really the cheapest uh, day out in terms of transport, but the fact that I can get into this museum, honestly a world-class museum, can I say that? The fact that I can get in on public transport is pretty special, even if it costs, you know, an arm and your firstborn. And while we're here, um, is, as part of this solo adventure, I kind of like to turn this into a series, to be honest. Um, doing certain activities on my own as like, you know, getting out of my comfort zone. If you have something that you'd like to suggest, whether it's a different museum or an activity or something that you like to do here in the UK, definitely leave a comment. Let me know. I would like to turn this into a series, but also like a personal goal. I think having the ability um, to do something on your own and not be unbelievably anxious or embarrassed. I really want that. You know, I want to be that girl. So if you have a suggestion, please let me know. But hopefully this first museum adventure turns out well, um, which I can already tell you it does because I'm already home <laughs> and I'm speaking from the future. But let's just pretend I don't know how today turns out. Ooh, what a mystery. Anyway, let's have a seat outside the museum um, and chat with present day, Alana, present day? She's not, I'm present day. Whatever, let's just talk with Alana, see, let's check in. Let's, ch let's check in with Alana in the field. Hey everyone, we made it. And it actually looks like it's going to 
pour. It got very windy all of a sudden. It feels great. It is no longer humid. Didn't prepare to walk home in the rain, but that's okay. Welcome to England. Anyway, we got here just fine. That train was busy. Like, I guess I, it's like summertime, but it's a Thursday. It was really busy, but we got here easy. Can you see? Now, one of the things that always really surprises me is the cost. So museums largely in the UK are free. Now, some of the exhibitions or like the special events are usually paid, but the overall collections are free, which as a Canadian is absolutely shocking. So I did a bit of a Google. Our big museum in Toronto um, is the ROM, the Royal Ontario Museum. And I wanted to have a look. What are ticket prices nowadays? Well, an adult ticket is 26 Canadian dollars, a child is 16, and a senior is 21. And there is no rate if you are going as a family, so maybe two adults and two kids or whatever. No, you gotta pay for everybody separately, which is really expensive. So I would go out on a limb and say a lot of Canadian families don't make the effort because it's actually a really expensive day out, whereas here, was the train expensive? Yes. <laughs> but the museum is free, which is incredible. Anyway, it actually looks like it's gonna storm literally any second. So let's go ahead and get in finally. It's almost lunchtime, <laughs> kind of hungry, but let's have a wander first and then get something to eat, shall we? Hey guys, I'm just currently editing this video. I hope you are liking it. Again, sorry about the allergies, but I'm just popping on to say that this video is sponsored by Odoo. Odoo is a all-in-one management software, which provides you with a ton of different applications that allow you to simplify running your own business, all done within one platform. So things like accounting, invoicing, project management, a website, a help desk, all of that can be done within Odoo. Your first Odoo application is free for life. Yes, I know, with unlimited hosting and support, plus a personalized domain name for one year. I wanted to show you guys how utterly simple it is to make your own website with Odoo. First up, start now. It's free, nice. Then we want a website, free with unlimited users forever. Beautiful. Then you need to sign up with your details and stuff, which is none of your beeswax, so give me a second. Ta-da, welcome to Odoo, yay. So when you use their website builder, it literally only is four steps and it takes you five seconds. I want, how about a blog? Um, perhaps something to do with history. Maybe you have a local history museum that you're really passionate about and you wanna have a blog about it, cool. Main objective is to develop your local history museum. Then we want um, a pre-made palette. I love this one. Pages and features, we're gonna take all of these, these top ones. Choose a theme. This looks super pretty. Building your website, <laughs> that's it. So to start off, we have that theme imported, um, but you can customize it literally however you like. We can come up here and hit edit. Then you get a bunch of different blocks that you can drag and drop. So say here we want to add text and then image. We can just drag and drop and put it right there. That's it. Then you can customize what you want it to say. A place in history. Awesome. It's that simple. They also have a really cool animation element, which is so fun. Like now that image is going to on appearance anime in. That's all you have to do. It's incredible. If this is something that interests you, maybe for your own business, or you've got like a side hustle that you're interested in starting up, definitely check out my link in the description and get one app free with Odoo. All right, I gotta get back to editing this video so you can watch it. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Hey guys, I'm back. So the museum is pretty big and it is honestly really nicely laid out. <laughs> can I say, can I gush about the layout of this museum? Cause I just did. So naturally we are going to start out on the ground floor, which is the first world war. And then sort of as you make your way up in the building, you sort of progress through time, which is really a smart way to do it. I'm literally gushing about the layout of this museum. I'm so sorry. Anyway, the first world war, floor basically the entire floor a really interesting gallery and can i just say this place is absolutely packed with stuff 
To be honest, it was a little bit overwhelming at first because there are so many plaques to read. I don't know if you can see the little colored um, different plaques sort of explaining what you're seeing. Honestly, so much was in here. Personally, my favorite stuff are the personal trinkets. So like people's um, journals where you could see their writing, their photographs, their items. Like, I don't know, the personal stuff for each individual soldier, I find the most interesting. And there is a lot here. There was also a lot of kids. So you'll see some children running, <laughs> running around. Oh, um, hold that thought. There was a lot of um, references to uh, the Commonwealth. So in particular, Canada, uh, that's where I'm from. And the Canadian soldiers that were involved with the war, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I'm from Ontario, so seeing this sign was really neat. This floor also covers quite a lot in terms of the use of gas. So, um, of course, gas in warfare in World War One was really surprising and it was something that was very new. So there's a lot of um, stories around the use of gas and honestly how terrifying it was because we hadn't seen that before. They also had a leather glove that was shrunk by this poison gas, which I thought was really interesting. You could see, you know, this adult man's glove, the size of like a child's and how gas interacted with not only the soldiers, obviously, but all of their equipment, all of their clothing. Um, yeah, just really fascinating. And honestly, not something that I had really thought about before. But honestly, you could spend really your whole time in this one exhibit. The amount of artifacts and personal stories, interactive bits, weapons, uniforms, like all of it, there was a lot. Um, and a lot to take in. So I know we're kind of like glazing over stuff and you're seeing things without knowing what it was. And I'm so sorry, that's probably really annoying. But uh, all I can say, it was very interesting, very eye-opening. I don't wanna say fun or cool because we're literally talking about a world war, but it was a very, um, what's the word we wanna say? Engaging exhibit, really well done. Absolutely massive. Lots of kids though. All right, I'm not gonna say that I shoved any kids out of the way. <laughs> Can you imagine a fight breaks out with me and a, and a school child in the World War I exhibit? It didn't happen, but um, yeah, just a, just a nose busy, just a, just a touch busy, but we still were able to see everything. You could still read everything. You just had to avoid the running school kids. But after making our way through the exhibit, you go up a bit of stairs and boom, you are in World War II. Now this, whole floor is dedicated to World War II. It doesn't feel as overwhelming because the Holocaust gets its own floor. So really, this is kind of split between two of the floors. Either way, this section was unbelievable. And there was also a lot of focus of what the war meant for everyday people, how it impacted the UK as a culture and as a society, just, you know, regular civilian life as well. And there is even a section that replicated a traditional home. So um, that bit's coming up. You can see like a little shelter, what a shelter might have looked like if you were in the UK for this time period. And I think many people watching might be. This might be something that you have actual memories of, which is wild. It's, I don't know, sometimes I think we, or maybe speaking for myself, you kind of distance this as like, oh, this is like history, but it's actually quite recent modern history. And even though I am Canadian, obviously, I don't know if you know that, I'm Canadian, and I didn't live in the UK during World War II, nor was I alive, um, my grandfather fought in D-Day. So there is that sort of close connection to this war. Um, he would have been, God, like early 20s, which, as a 30 year old, um, I cannot even imagine. Yeah, it can't, can't even comprehend what that must have been like. But this whole floor, this whole World War II um, exhibit, really well done. Again, you can see the combination of um, items. This was a Winnie the Pooh gas mask. No, sorry, not Winnie the Pooh, Mickey Mouse for children. Can I can't even begin to understand what that must have been like. So a lot of focus 
not only on the war, but also of the British people and of the civilians and, and what that would have been like. I know we have to glaze over a lot of the stuff here. I mean, you could spend all day just reading out the plaques, but this in particular is something that I wanted to point out. It was that crews decorated their aircraft with art to boost morale. And this one in particular you'll see has uh, Disney characters, which I thought was really interesting. But then below it, it says, crews were expected to complete a tour of 30 operations. By 1943, only one in six men survived their first tour and only 2.5% survived the second. So at first you see this really cool art, you know, they're decorating their ships or their um, aircraft rather. And then you keep reading, it's like, oh yeah, only 2.5 people, 2.5% people survive. Like, I just, incomprehensible. So after this floor, um, I was getting pretty tired and hungry. So much here to read and experience. I know we've kind of glazed over it. I can't recommend this place enough if you are interested in this type of history in any capacity it's just unbelievable. So normally I don't really like eating at museum cafeterias <laughs> because it's usually really overpriced and not that good, but where I was kind of pressed for time and I was just by myself, I thought, you know what, let's head downstairs to the, the cafe and have something to eat. Um, it was busy and I panic ordered. Um, I, <laughs> I ordered a chicken Caesar ciabatta because I thought, can't go wrong with that, right? But I was wrong because have a look at this sandwich. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you how expensive this was. Have a guess. <laughs> oh my god. This was £7.50. I wish that was a joke. Like I mentioned earlier, the next floor up is dedicated to the Holocaust. So um, you are not allowed to film. I wouldn't want to film there. Anyway, it is really shocking. Um, very blunt about what happened, uh, photographs of what happened, like really, um, yeah, br made me cry, to be completely honest. It was really heavy. I absolutely recommend it, of course, uh, not for the faint of heart, but I think everyone should go through it. It was really well done and very, it was very tough. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, that's all I gotta say. It, it was important and difficult. So after that floor, um, there, on the, some of the outer bits of the floor, it's kind of hard to explain, but there's a bunch of like vehicles and um, machinery and things that don't fit in the regular um, exhibits. There's also um, this section about the Cold War. This particular telephone I thought was interesting because it was at a police station in Ashford, Kent. But there were a bunch of sort of Cold War bits and um, also a couple of things from the Troubles in Northern Ireland, although I kind of thought there'd be more, but hey ho, there's only so much space. Um, and any sort of aircraft or missiles or um, machinery, that sort of stuff that doesn't fit in the other spots, in the other like exhibitions, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're out sort of in this open area. So I had a wander. I mean, at this point, I am tuckered out emotionally, physically. <laughs> I'm getting a bit tired but just so much stuff to see. I thought this particular item was really cool item. It's a Lancashire bomber from 1943 built in Manchester. You can see the inside, which I thought was really cool, really well preserved considering the amount of flights that it did or missions that, I don't know how you say that, the amount of use it saw. Um, and you can also see some really cool art as well on the front. I think this woman in particular was flown by Australians, old Fred, and you can also see if the glare's not too bad, you can see the insides, which I thought was really neat. So obviously this guy is massive, so it was kind of outside of the World War II exhibit with all the other like big machines and stuff, but very, very cool. And then of course, had a nose through the gift shop. Nothing says world conflict, like buying a nice little souvenir. <laughs> They had some cute stuff though, I'll be honest. There's some cute stuff and um, some really neat posters. I'm always kind of a sucker for a nice poster. I don't have anywhere to hang it, but they were pretty cool. And um, this stuffed animal, oh my God, I stood there and I thought, I gotta have this. But no, I let them go and I'm still thinking about them. Anyway, let's make our way out of this massive museum and catch up with Alana. What did she think of this place? Well, everyone, what a day! I don't want to say that I had fun. 
it's really windy out. I don't know if I'll be able to film anything. I don't want to say that I had fun, but I had a very enlightening time. It was a little bit busy with some of the school kids, but where I had extra time, I could go back through if I needed to and like nobody was there. So overall, a really eventful and successful first museum solo adventure. <laughs> and I hope Alana doing a voiceover on this video can turn that into something good to watch. I had a great time. I hope that comes through on this video. There's a lot of stuff to look at. Of course, I'm kind of like glossing over things, but I found it really interesting. If you are able to go, I would 100% recommend it. All of that stuff is free. It's just kind of insane. I think I'd have to say, okay, so the Holocaust is very um, enlightening, that whole floor, but probably my favorite part was World War I is the main exhibition bit on the first floor. I feel like I don't see as much about World War I as I do World War II. I feel like World War II is everywhere, like in movies and TV and like just television programs, like history television programs is World War II. And there's so much that I don't know about World War I. So I found that actually really surprising. But overall, I'm really glad, I'm really glad that we did this today. And I hope this is a good video. And if it's not, I'm sorry. I appreciate you watching till the end. Um, but I'm really glad that I did this. And it feels like the next progression, what do we do next solo? What's the next, what's the next step? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. Overall, I had a great time. There's so much, it's really hard to show. I, maybe it comes through in this video just how much there's a lot. And the fact that this is free is just unbelievable. There's a huge grounds area here as well where there's like loads of schools and like families and stuff coming out for a nice day. Anywho, um, it feels like a beautiful day, not humid, also not raining, which is very exciting. So I'm going to slowly make my way back to the train station and head home. If you'd like to watch more content right now, which honestly would be so awesome, why not check out this one, how the UK used Monopoly to win the war. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.